we discuss the simplex algorithm for bounded variables. We will look at this example maximize 8 x 1 plus 3 x 2 subject to 3 constraints. Also subject to 2 additional restrictions that x 1 is less than or equal to 2 and x 2 is less than or equal to 6. So, there are actually 5 constraints per se, but 2 of them are called bounds because they simply place a restriction on a single variable the value that a single variable can take. So, in order to simplify this problem otherwise we will be solving a problem with 5 constraints. So, we take out the bounds and we treat this as a 3 constraint problem and then suitably incorporate the effect of these bounds into the constraints and we solve it. So, let us see how we go about doing that. So, the first thing that we do is to convert these inequalities to equations by adding appropriate slack variables. So, this will become plus x 3 equal to 7, this will become plus x 4 equal to 8 and this will become plus x 5 equal to 20. We already know that we have less than or equal to constraints, they have been converted to equations by the addition of slack variables. So, these slack variables automatically qualify to be basic variables. So, we can start the algebraic form of the simplex by treating x 3, x 4 and x 5 as basic variables. So, we write x 3 is equal to 7 minus 3 x 1 minus x 2 x 4 is equal to 8 minus 2 x 1 plus x 2 and x 5 is equal to 20 minus 2 x 1 minus 3 x 2 z which is the objective function is 8 x 1 plus 3 x 2. Now, we have written all the basic variables in terms of the non basic variables and the objective function in terms of the non basic variables. So, that the solution can be read x 3 equal to 7, x 4 equal to 8, x 5 equal to 20 and z is equal to 8 x 1 plus 3 x 2. Now, we want to increase z, right now z is at 0 because x 1 and x 2 being non basic variables are at 0. So, z is equal to 0, we want to increase z which can be done by either increasing x 1 or increasing x 2, both of them are at 0. Based on the largest coefficient rule, we enter that variable which has the largest c j minus z j or the largest coefficient here. So, variable x 1 will enter. Now, we have to find out the leaving variable corresponding to variable x 1. So, if variable x 1 enters and starts taking a positive value, x 3 is going to come down as x 1 increases and when x 1 takes value 7 by 3 which is the limiting value x 3 will become 0. So, the limiting value for x 1 based on this equation is 7 by 3. The limiting value for x 1 based on this is 4 beyond which x 4 will become negative and the limiting value for this based on this equation is 10. So, the limiting value is the minimum of these 3 values which happens to be 7 by 3 in this case. In a normal simplex iteration we would enter x 1, we would also say that x 3 is the leaving variable and x 1 will take a value 7 by 3, but we also have the additional restriction that x 1 is less than or equal to 2 and x 2 is less than or equal to 6 which is very much part of the problem which we have actually separately kept. So, we also have to check that this 7 by 3 which is the limiting value also fulfills or satisfies this constraint that x 1 is less than or equal to 2. Now, 7 by 3 is bigger than 2 and therefore, the limiting value for x 1 is not 7 by 3, but it is 2. So, x 1 will now increase from its lower value of 0 to the upper value of 2. And now, we start indicating this as x 1 is equal to 2 plus x 1 star. So, we replace x 1 as 2 plus x 1 star. 
the x 1 star is used only when the variable has reached its upper limit or its upper bound. So, we now substitute x 1 is equal to 2 plus x 1 star in these three equations to get x 3 is equal to 7 minus 3 times 2 plus x 1 star minus x 2 which will be 7 minus 6 1 1 minus 3 x 1 star minus x 2. 7 minus 6 is 1 minus 3 x 1 star minus x 2. Now, x 4 is now written as 8 minus 2 times 2 plus x 1 star plus x 2 which will become 8 minus 4 4 4 minus 2 x 1 star plus x 2 and x 5 will become x 5 is equal to 20 minus 2 times 2 plus x 1 star minus 3 x 2 which is 20 minus 4 is 16 16 minus 2 x 1 star minus 3 x 2. So, x 3 is equal to 1 minus 3 x 1 star minus x 2, x 4 is equal to 4 minus 2 x 1 star plus x 2, x 5 is 16 minus 2 x 1 star minus 3 x 2. Z which is the value of the objective function for this solution is 8 x 1 plus 3 x 2. So, 8 into x 1 is 2 plus x 1 star plus 3 x 2 which is 8 into 2 16 plus 8 x 1 star 8 x 1 star plus 3 x 2. Now, we want to increase the objective function value z further. So, from this expression we know that z can be increased if x 1 star can be increased or if x 2 can be increased. Before that we also realize the actual solution here is x 3 equal to 1, x 4 equal to 4, x 5 equal to 16, x 1 is at its upper limit of 2 with z equal to 16. So, x 1 is at the upper limit of 2, 8 into 2 16 you see in the objective function. Now, 3 x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 is 7. So, 3 into 2 6 plus x 3 equal to 1 is 7, 2 into 2 4 plus x 4 equal to 4. So, 4 plus 4 is 8, 2, 2 x 1, x 1 is at 2, so it is 4 plus x 5 is 16 which is equal to 20. So, if z has to be increased further, it based on this expression, we can either increase x 1 star or increase x 2. Now, increasing x 1 star is not possible because if we increase x 1 star from this, x 1 will exceed its upper limit of 2. So, x 1 star can only be decreased. So, we cannot increase x 1 star, but increase in x 2 is possible because currently x 2 is non basic at 0. So, we try and enter x 2 into the basis and see the limit to which x 2 can be increased. From this equation, as x 2 increases, this value of x 3 is going to come down and as it will allow a limiting value of x 2 equal to 1 at which x 3 will become 0. So, increasing x 2 beyond 1 will make this negative and bring infeasibility. So, the limiting value is 1 based on this. Based on this equation, increasing x 2 is not going to bring down x 4, it is only going to increase x 4. So, we do not have an issue with respect to this constraint. With respect to this constraint, increasing x 2 is going to bring down x 5 and the limiting value that x 2 can take is 16 by 3 at which this will become 0. So, 16 by 3 is the limiting value. So, minimum of the limiting values is x 2 equal to 1. Now, before we fix the limiting value to 1, we also need to check whether it is within the bound value of 6. It is within the bound value of 6, 
Therefore, we would do a normal simplex iteration by entering x 2 and by replacing x 3 with x 2. So, we rewrite these. So, from the first equation we write this as x 2 is equal to 1 minus 3 x 1 star minus x 3 which we get from this equation. From this equation x 4 is equal to 4 minus 2 x 1 star plus x 2 which is 4 minus 2 x 1 star plus 1 minus 3 x 1 star minus x 3 which is 5 minus 5 x 1 star minus x 3 and x 5 is equal to 16 minus 2 x 1 star minus 3 x 2. So, 16 minus 2 x 1 star minus 16 minus 2 x 1 star minus 3 x 2. So, 16 minus 2 x 1 star minus 3 into 1 minus 3 x 1 star minus x 3. So, this will become 16 minus 3 13 minus 2 x 1 star plus 9 x 1 star is plus 7 x 1 star plus 3 x 3 from here. Now, the z value is 16 plus 8 x 1 star plus 3 x 2. So, 16 plus 8 x 1 star plus 3 x 2, x 2 can be got from here 1 minus 3 x 1 star minus x 3, which will give us 16 plus 3 19 plus 8 x 1 star minus 9 x 1 star is minus x 1 star minus 3 x 3. Now, let us quickly verify the solution. Now, the solution is x 2 equal to 1, x 1 equal to 2. So, that gives us 8 into 2 16 plus 3 19. We have x 1 equal to 2 6 plus x 2 equal to 1 7, x 3 is non basic at 0 x 1 equal to 2 gives us 4, 4 minus 1 3, x 4 is at 5. So, 3 plus 5 is 8, x 1 equal to 2 4 plus 3 7, so x 5 is at 13 which gives us 20. So, from this we get a solution x 1 is already at 2 because x 1 star is here which means x 1 is at 2, x 2 is at 1, x 4 is 4, x 4 is 5, x 5 is 13 and z is this. Now, we want to increase z further, increasing z further can be done by either decreasing x 1 star or by decreasing x 3. Now, decreasing x 3 is not possible because x 3 is non basic at 0. So, if we decrease it will become negative and the feasibility will be affected. Therefore, we can decrease x 1 star. Decreasing x 1 star is possible because x 1 star is defined as x 1 is 2 plus x 1 star. So, decreasing x 1 star is allowed because it will only minimize or reduce the value from 2 to some other value. So, we look at the possibility of decreasing x 1 star. Now, what happens when we decrease here? Now, when we decrease x 1 star, x 2 is going to increase. So, x 2 is at 1 already. So, decreasing this is going to increase x 2 and we can decrease x 1 star till it reaches this reaches its upper limit of 6, because x 2 is restricted up to 6. So, this would allow us to decrease x, x 1 star by an amount 5 by 3, so that 5 by 3 into 3 is 5, 5 plus 1 is 6. Decreasing beyond 5 by 3 will increase this beyond 6, which is not allowed. As far as this is concerned, decreasing x 1 star is only going to increase x 4 further and therefore, this is not going to affect us at all x 4 is at 5. So, it is not going to affect us. Now, as far as this is concerned decreasing x 1 star is going to decrease x 5. So, this would allow x 1 star to be decreased up to 13 by 7. 
so that this value will become 0. Now, between these two limiting values of 5 by 3 and 13 by 7, we also know that 5 by 3 will be the limiting value, because decreasing this by 13 by 7 would make this go beyond the upper limit. So, the limiting value is given by 5 by 3. We should also check that with this limiting value of 5 by 3, x 1 which is 2 plus x 1 star does not go below 0. So, 5 by 3 make sure that this does not go below 0, which also means that the limiting value that we define here, which is the minimum of these two values should also be less than or equal to 2, which is satisfied. So, now we choose this as the limiting value and now we start rewriting this particular equation. So, we write this particular equation using this. Now, what happens when we decrease x 1 star by 5 by 3? Now, in order to do that, x 1 star has to be written in terms of x 1 and then this makes x 2 take its upper limit of 6. So, now x 2 has to be written as 6 plus x 2 star. So, what we first do is this. Now, we write this as 6 plus x 2 star is equal to 1 minus 3 times x 1 star is x 1 minus 2. So, 3 times x 1 minus 2 minus x 3 from which 6 plus x 2 star is equal to this is another 6. So, 7 minus 3 x 1 7 minus 3 x 1 minus x 3. Now, bring this to this side 3 x 1 is equal to 7 minus 6 1 minus x 2 star minus x 3 from which x 1 is equal to 1 by 3 minus x 2 star by 3 minus x 3 by 3. Now, we also verify that we decreased x 1 star by 5 by 3. So, x 1 will become 2 minus 5 by 3 which is 1 by 3 which is what we get here. Now, the rest of the things we need to write now. So, x 4 is 5 minus 5 x 1 star 5 into x 1 minus 2 minus x 3. So, this is 5 minus this is plus 10 plus 5 15 minus 5 x 1 minus x 3. So, this is 15 minus 5 into 1 by 3 minus x 2 star by 3 minus x 3 by 3 minus x 3. This becomes 15 minus 5 by 3 is 40 by 3 plus 5 x 2 star by 3 plus 5 x 3 by 3 minus x 3 will give us plus 2 x 3 by 3. 5 x 3 by 3 minus x 3 is plus 2 x 3 by 3. Now, x 5 is equal to 13 plus 7 x 1 star. So, 13 plus 7 into x 1 minus 2 plus 3 x 3. Now, this is 13 minus 14. So, minus 1 plus 7 x 1, x 1 is here. So, 1 by 3 minus x 2 star by 3 minus x 3 by 3 plus 3 x 3. 7 by 3 minus 1 is 4 by 3 plus 7 minus 7 x 2 star by 3 from this. This is minus 7 by 3 x 3 plus 3 x 3 is plus 2 by 3 x 3. 
Now, z is equal to 19 minus x 1 star minus 3 x 3 19 minus x 1 star is x 1 minus 2 minus 3 x 3. So, this is 17 minus or 21 19 plus 2. So, 21 minus x 1 is 1 by 3 minus x 2 star by 3 minus x 3 by 3 minus 3 x 3. So, 21 minus 1 by 3 is 62 by 3 plus x 2 star by 3 plus x 3 by 3 minus 3 x 3 is minus 8 by 3 x 3. This is plus 1 by 3 minus 3 is minus 8 by 3 x 3. So, the present solution is right now x 1 equal to 1 by 3 x 2 is equal to 6 because you find x 2 star in this equation x 2 is at 6 x 4 is 40 by 3 x 5 is 4 by 3. So, let us quickly check that. So, x 1 is 1 by 3 this is 6 6 into 3 6 into 3 is 18 18 plus 8 by 3 is 62 by 3 which you find here for z 62 by 3. Now, let us check the rest of the values 3 x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 equal to 7 3 x 1 is 1 x 1 is 1 by 3. So, 3 x 1 is 1 1 plus 6 7 x 3 is non basic at 0 2 by 3 minus 6. So, 2 by 3 minus 6 plus x 4 is equal to 8. So, 2 by 3 minus 6 is minus 16 by 6. So, minus 16 by 6 plus 40 by 3 which is 80 by 6 is 64 by 2 x 1 is 2 by 3 minus x 2 is minus 6 plus x 4 is 40 by 3. So, this will give you 2 minus 18 plus 40 by 3 which is 24 by 3 which is 8 and the third one is 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 2 x 1 is 2 by 3 3 x 2 is 3 into 6 18 plus x 5 x 5 is 4 by 3. So, this is 54 plus 4 58 plus 2 60 by 3 is 20. So, it satisfies all these and z is equal to 62 by 3. Now, if we want to increase z further it can be done by decreasing x 3 or increasing x 2 star. Now, decreasing x 3 is not possible because x 3 is non basic at 0. So, it cannot be decreased. Increasing x 2 star is also not possible because x 2 star is now defined. We have already defined this x 2 star x 2 is equal to 6 plus x 2 star. So, increasing x 2 star will make x 2 go beyond 6 which is not allowed. So, both these things are not possible therefore, the algorithm terminates with the optimum solution x 1 is equal to 1 by 3 x 2 is equal to 6 and z is equal to 62 by 3. So, this is the algebraic version of the simplex method for bounded variables. The advantage is that as we already mentioned the advantage is that we did not include these two as explicit constraints we included these two as bounds. So, we took away the bounds from the original problem reduced the number of constraints and every time we were entering a variable or leaving a variable, we were indirectly considering the effect of the bound. 
the presence of the star variable indicates that the corresponding variable is at its upper limit or upper bound. There are times you will have to see the effect to find out whether a currently basic variable because of the increase or decrease can either get a lower value or a higher value. For example, here we realize that we are going to decrease x 1 star. Now, as a result of the decrease of x 1 star, x 2 went up to its upper bound whereas, x 5 went towards its lower bound. So, all these will have to be taken into consideration when we use the algebraic method. This can also be written in a tabular form more for the sake of convenience and ease of understanding I have explained it in the algebraic method. One can write uh, the, the do the simplex method for bounded variables in the tabular form as well. But more importantly what we have learnt is that if there are explicit bounds in the problem it is possible to separate these bounds treat the problem make the problem smaller by looking only at the valid constraints and each constraint should have more than one variable here and then use the algebraic method or the tabular method and suitably incorporate the effect of the bound both in the entering variable as well as in the leaving variable and then proceed to get to the optimal solution. So, this way by which we take away or separate the bounds and solve a smaller sized problem in terms of the number of constraints makes the simplex method for bounded variables a very efficient and superior way to solve linear programming problems when we have bounds on certain set of variables. So, what we do next is to understand something called column generation which we will explain through a very well known problem called the cutting stock problem. So, through the cutting stock problem we will see one application of linear programming. Through this cutting stock problem, we also understand the concept of column generation. Now, as we go through this example, I will also try and explain what column generation is. So, let us take an example to learn the cutting stock problem. So, the one dimensional cutting stock problem we address the one dimensional cutting stock problem here. So, the one dimensional cutting stock problem is as follows. So, we will assume that we have say sheets with 20 inch width that are available. We will also assume that a large number of these kind of sheets are available and from these 20 inch sheets we need to cut sheets with width 9 inch, 8 inch, 7 inch and 6 inch in only one direction which means cutting in this direction is only allowed we do not cut in the other direction. So, we cut only in the 20 inch direction that is why it is called a one dimensional cutting stock problem. Now, the demand for 9 inch is 511, the demand for 8 inch is 301, demand for 7 inch is 263 and demand for 6 inch is 383. Now, what we want to do is to try and use minimum number of these sheets. To begin with we would even say that we want to use these sheets such that we minimize the wastage as well as we wish to use minimum number of sheets out of this. Now, we have already seen some aspects of this one dimensional cutting stock problem in the earlier lecture series on fundamentals of operations research where we looked at the formulation of the 
one dimensional cutting stock problem. So, let us spend a few minutes on the formulation and then we go back into how we solve the one dimensional cutting stock problem. Now, there are initially the, the best thing to do is to try and create patterns that can be cut. For example, we may say that since we want 9 inch, 8 inch, 7 inch and 6 inch, we can start generating patterns. We might say pattern number 1 is to cut 2 into 9 which is 18 and a waste of 2 which will make it 20. Another pattern would be to do 2 of 8 and to have a wastage of 4. Third pattern is to have, we cannot have 3 of 7 because it exceeds 20. So, we could have 2 of 7 and then we have a remaining 6. So, you could have 1 of 6 and define this as a waste of 0. Another pattern could be to have 3 of 8 or 2, 3 of 6 and have a wastage of 2. So, like this we can create patterns. For example, we could have a fifth pattern which is 0, 0, 1 and 2. So, 2 into 6 12 plus 7 19 with wastage of 1 and so on. So, we can do this kind of a thing we can create as many patterns as we can. In this particular example, there are 10 possible patterns provided we define the wastage in a certain way. Right now, we have defined wastage as the wastage has to be less than or equal to the 6. For example, we did not consider till now a pattern which is 0, 0, 2, 0 with wastage equal to 6, because we knew that with a wastage equal to 6, we can generate 1 of 6. So, it became 0, 0, 2, 1 with waste equal to 0. So, the way we have generated patterns till now, please note that this is only an indicative set of patterns, not exhaustive. There are 10 possible patterns, we have written only 5 of them, but we have made sure that the wastage that we have here is less than this. So, what will happen is if we formulate this problem as, so there will be actually 10 patterns. So, x 1 is the number of sheets with which we cut pattern 1, x 2 is the number of sheets with which we cut pattern 2 and so on, x 5 is the number of sheets with which we cut pattern 5 and x 10 is the number of sheets with which we cut pattern number 10. We want to minimize the wastage. So, the wastage which is the objective function will become minimize z is equal to 2 x 1 plus 4 x 2 plus 0 x 3 plus 1 x 3 and so on. Subject to if we have these 10 patterns, what will happen is we will have initially let me write down all these 10 patterns, so that we also understand what they are. So, I have written the patterns 2 0, 0 2 0 0, 0 0 2 1, 0 0 0 3, have 1 1 0 0 with waste is equal to 3, you could have 1 0 1 0, 9 plus 7 16 waste is equal to 4, you could have 1 0 0 1 with waste is equal to 5 you could have 0 1 0 2 with waste is equal to 0 and you could have 0 0 1 2 with waste is equal to 1. You also have 0 1 1 0 with waste is equal to 5. So, these are the 10 possible patterns in this case. So, we call this as x 6, x 7, x 8, x 9, x 10. So, x 10 would represent this variable. So, the objective function will become 2 x 1 plus 4 x 2 plus 0 x 3 etcetera plus 5 x 10. Subject to the condition, now we how many 
9 inches we will get we will get 2 x 1 plus x 6 plus x 7 plus x 8 is greater than or equal to 511. This is for the 9 inch. Similarly, we will have one constraint for the 8 inch which is 2 x 2 plus x 6 plus x 9 plus x 10 is greater than or equal to 301 and so on. So, we will have 3 more constraints here. So, those are 2 x 2 plus x 6 plus x 9 plus x 10 is greater than or equal to 301, 2 x 3 plus x 5 plus x 7 plus x 10 greater than or equal to 263, x 3 plus 3 x 4 plus 2 x 5 plus x 8, 2 x 9 greater than or equal to 383 and x j greater than or equal to 0 and integer. The integer becomes important because x 1 to x 10 represent the number of sheets that we are going to cut. So, these have to be integers. So, in, in principle this problem is not a linear programming problem, it is an integer programming problem, but so far we have not learnt about integer programming. We will learn about integer programming a little later in this lecture series. So, for the present we will relax this integer restriction and treat this problem as a linear programming problem by not bothering so much about the integer values that the variables can take. So, it becomes a linear programming problem. Now, one of the reasons I have put an inequality here and not an equation is this. Now, these are the possible patterns and since we have depending on the pattern different numbers that are being generated 2 for example, 3 here and so on. It may be possible that when x takes certain values we may end up having more than 511, particularly when you restrict x to integer, you may have a situation where the left hand side can become more slightly more than the right hand side. So, if we end up having something slightly more than the right hand side, for example, because x j is integer, we may end up getting 384 sheets of 6 instead of 383 sheets of 6, the left hand side can become more. In such a case, the extra sheet can be treated notionally as a waste. It is not a waste, but from the point of view of this problem, it may be treated as unwanted. So, if we really wish to minimize the waste, the waste is not only this plus the additional sheets. So, the waste will be this plus waste is equal to z, which is this expression plus extra sheets over and above 511. So, this will be 9 times 2 x 1 plus x 6 plus x 7 plus x 8 minus 511 plus 8 times the extra 8 inch sheets that we have got. So, this will become 2 x 2 plus x 6 plus etcetera minus 301 and so on. We have already seen in the earlier course that when we simplify this expression we will simply get minimize some z is equal to this z is different from this we may call this as z 1. So, z 1 waste is called as a z. So, z will become 20 times x 1 plus x 2 plus x 10 plus some constant k and we already know from linear programming that this k can be ignored and since 20 is a common product of all of them this can be ignored. So, the problem actually becomes so the problem now becomes minimize 
summed over j x j, because this objective function reduces to minimizing x 1 plus x 2 up to x 10. So, the problem of cutting it such that we minimize the waste essentially reduces to the problem of minimizing the number of sheets that we cut. Subject to the condition, this can be written in general, this can be written as a i j x j is greater than or equal to b j summed over i, where j is 1, 2, 3, 4 in our case. Now, x j is summed over j is greater than or equal to b i, i equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 represent the four types of sheets, x j, j equal to 1 to 10 represent the 10 patterns and x j greater than or equal to 0 and integer. Now, this greater than or equal to comes as already explained is because we we treat when we treat x to be integer, there is a possibility that we may end up generating more sheets than what is required. Now, another way of looking at this problem is so far we did not consider any pattern where the waste was 6 or more. For example, we may consider it is possible to consider a pattern which can look like this. It's, it may be possible to consider for example, 11th pattern we may say pattern number 10, pattern number 10 was 0, 1, 1, 0 with 5. So, we may consider 11th pattern for example, as 1, 0, 0, 0 with waste equal to 11, because we just cut 1 of 9 and say that the waste is 11. So, even if we make this assumption and generate patterns, when we make this assumption and generate patterns, the number of patterns becomes very, very large. For example, nothing prevents us from even considering a pattern 0, 0, 0, 0 with waste is equal to 20. So, the number of patterns becomes very large even though the disadvantage that the number of patterns have become very large, the advantage is the fact that this inequality will now become an equation. So, when we generate all these patterns and then use these patterns suitably, we will not encounter a situation where at the end of the solution, this one will be slightly more than the right hand side, it will not be it will become exactly equal. So, the problem becomes from a j x j greater than or equal to b i to a j x j equal to b i. If we consider all patterns which can be possible and all these patterns may some of these patterns may even have a waste or a wastage more than the minimum of this. There are certain advantages of using this equation here, because already from the duality theory that we saw in the earlier lecture series on fundamentals of operations research, we know that if this problem is treated as a primal, now the primal has all constraints which are equations and it is dual therefore, will have all variables that are unrestricted. So, there are certain advantages in having primal constraints as equations, particularly when we are not going to solve the primal directly. If we are going to have an algorithm, which uses the relationship between the primal and the dual, an equation in the primal would give us unrestricted variables in the dual, which is a great advantage. Therefore, between choosing one possibility, the first possibility was to leave out patterns like this to look at patterns which have waste less than or equal to waste less than 6, have a smaller number of patterns and solve the primal, where the primal is a i j x j greater than or equal to b i is one way of looking at the problem. The other way of looking at the problem is to consider more patterns much more 
introduce more variables, consider patterns which seem to be unacceptable in the sense that the waste is more than even 9, but trying to exploit the advantage the mathematically the advantage that the primal now has equations and then derive an algorithm which is based on the primal and the dual and exploit the fact that the dual has unrestricted variables. Now, between these two options we may we are now going to see the second option and how nicely an algorithm can be created or can be made to solve this problem. So, we will look at this problem where a j x j is equal to b i x j greater than or equal to 0 and integer. So, this problem is an integer programming problem it still holds minimizing wastage is equal to minimizing the total number of sheets that are being cut. Once again we have not learnt integer programming and the basics of it we will do that later in this lecture series. So, what we will do now is to treat this problem as a linear programming problem and solve this. Now, as I said we are not going to solve the primal instead we would exploit this condition. So, that the dual has an unrestricted variable. Now, because of this equation we have also realized that the number of patterns becomes very large. So, when the number first of all we do not know what is that number the number can become very very large and the second point is that are we going to store all these somewhere when we have this algorithm. Because if you are solving a linear programming problem you have to somehow store the coefficient matrix. Remember that these numbers are reflected here as coefficients. So, the question is when these numbers become large now, are we going to store all these numbers? Now, the answer is we are not going to store these numbers. Then, how are we going to solve it? Now, we use this method called column generation to take care of that. Now, so we will not store all the columns instead we will generate the column as we move along. We will start only with if there are four types of sheets required four different types 9 inch, 8 inch, 7 inch and 6 inch. We will now generate to begin with only four patterns. In fact, one good look at this will also tell us that there are four constraints. Therefore, if it is a linear programming problem there will be only four basic variables. So, only four patterns will effectively be chosen if it is a linear programming problem. So, what we will do is we will not generate all the exhaustive set of patterns. We would simply start with four patterns at a time. The four most meaningful patterns are this, this, this and even 0, 0, 2, 0 instead of 0, 0, 2, 1 are the four most meaningful patterns because of the fact that these patterns are cut only with 9 inch, 8 inch, 7 inch and 6 inch. For example, 0, 0, 2, 0 would mean you are cutting only 7 inch here. So, we take these four patterns and then in every iteration we will find out a new pattern that can enter. That pattern is generated using this column generation technique. So, how we solve this linear programming problem using the column generation technique we will see in the next lecture.